Tai San's fate had taken a new turn. She felt trepidation at what lay in store, as the girl who had bought her at the auction led her new possession along, pulling the chain bound around Tai San's wrists. They were making their way, flanked by guards, through what had once been a luxury resort located outside the city, the Gardens of the East. Tai San noticed the name on a sign at the entrance when they arrived, visible in various languages, representing the international clientele who had obviously once frequented it in the old adult world. Unlike the city of the slave traders in which she had just been sold, with its graffiti and decay, so similar to Tai San's own home city, the Gardens of the East was like a paradise, a stunning complex left over from the adult times and mostly intact, a refuge from the chaotic and dangerous world outside. In the main courtyard, ornate fountains spouted water into the air, the lawns were manicured, the gardens tended to, neat and orderly, well-cut hedges trimmed to perfection in a variety of shapes showing the care and privilege of whoever lived there, as well as the power and influence they must wield in order to live such a luxurious way of life amidst all the poverty, anarchy, and disorder. Everywhere Tai San looked, there were trappings of wealth. From what once would have been expensive items of antiquity, sculpture, and furnishings, to more modern trinkets and gadgets of the adult technological age, with various still-functional computers and high-tech gear visible throughout the resort. Whoever lived at the Gardens of the East was clearly rich and powerful. They had a large staff, many servants, or likely slaves, Tai San thought, working hard to maintain the impeccably high standards so obviously expected of them. And more impressive and also ominous than the quantity of servants was the number of guards, the resort had effectively its own private army, standing watch on duty to protect whoever was inside. As they continued on, Tai San was amazed by the scale and beauty of it, a materialistic perfection all around her, such a change from the basic peasant conditions she had been so used to in her life of late, tending the fields, growing the crops for her previous captors. They passed a servant girl meticulously scrubbing the floor of the outdoor courtyard. Was that it, Tai San thought? Speculating if her fate was to become a servant girl of some kind? Or was there something more chilling awaiting her, Tai San dreaded, passing a mirror in a corridor and gazing at her own reflection, wondering if her beautiful dress was the first step to her becoming a concubine of some sort, to be pressured to give some other form of labor and attention to whoever was the master of the house, providing favors in exchange for food and lodging, and perhaps even in exchange for her life? They reached two ornate doors at the end of the corridor, the girl who had bought Tai San knocking politely. A voice within answered. The doors opened. Tai San was led inside. It was a palatial suite the centerpiece being an indoor pool glistening with clear water in the large room, itself full of stunning high-quality furniture, Persian rugs, exotic statues. A banquet table was set out, covered in an abundance of fresh fruit and food of various cuisines, prepared by an expert chef. Sitting in the center of the suite was a teenager around Tai San's age, reclining in a leather office chair Sitting by a desk covered in paperwork, several computer monitors, he watched impassively as Tai San was led towards him. He was flanked by servants who waved palm frond fans above his head, keeping their master cool with a constant gentle breeze. Vamos, tráiganla aquí, siéntenla ahí. Fuera, ya no los necesito. He spoke to the girl who had bought Tai San, giving an order in a language Tai San didn't understand. The girl bowed dutifully, exiting the room with her guards, followed by all the servants who had been there, closing the impressive doors behind them as they left, leaving Tai San standing alone with only this mysterious figure in the suite. Getting up from his desk, the unknown master advanced towards Tai San, 
He hadn't taken his eyes off her and stared, considering her, analyzing in deep thought. Tai Sang couldn't help but involuntarily flinch as he approached, each step that brought him nearer bringing her closer to finding out what was to be her fate. Who are you? Tai San asked warily, before realizing he probably didn't understand her language, or so she thought. I am the one you're destined to meet, the stranger said, pulling the flower away from Tai San's hair, causing it to unravel, cascading down on her shoulders, before taking hold of her gently by the hand and undoing the binders around her wrists, unlocking them with a the key, the cuffs clattering to the ground. There, he said, removing the binders around Tai San's ankles and standing back to admire her. You're free. Somehow, I don't think so, Tai San ventured suspiciously. I'm not here by my choice. But you have a choice, he said, sitting down and taking his place again at his desk, typing in on his computer. Tai San cautiously held her ground, but couldn't resist a glance at the banquet of food just out of arm's reach. Go ahead. Eat. That's why it's there. I'm not hungry, Tai San replied, though in truth she was ravenous, the prospect of food tantalizing. Try the fruit. It was handpicked this morning. No doubt by slaves, Tai San thought. Still, she had to eat. Her body was crying for energy. And advancing toward the banquet table, she picked up an apple, biting into it, savoring the sweetness, the taste. The stranger tapped data into his computer. Tai San. That's T A I S A N. Is that how you spell your name? The stranger asked, entering in data. Tai San turned and considered the stranger in a mixture of growing fear and confusion. My name. How did you know my name? I know a lot about you and your tribe, the mole rats. How could anyone this far from home know anything about the mole rats, about her? And none of the images do you justice, the mysterious figure complimented, continuing to search on his computer before casting an admiring glance at Tai San. You are a lot more impressive in real life. Suddenly, multiple images of Tai San appeared on banks of monitors spread around the walls of the cavernous room. Then, as the stranger continued typing, keying commands, various other multiple images were displayed. Familiar faces from her past, people she hadn't seen for too long, only in her memories, her dreams. Images of Ryan, Patsy, Paul, Alice, Casey, Danny, other members of her old tribe, the Mall Rats. Tai San gazed around incredulously and turned to the stranger. Who are you? she asked. For all her anxiety and fear, she felt anger rising. Had this individual had something to do with the disappearance of her friends and loved ones? Were they still alive? In captivity somewhere? What had happened to them? I'm a collector. A gatherer, shall we say, of valuable commodities, knowledge, and information. He gazed at Tai San intently, studying her expression, all charm lost from the tone of his voice. And I just need one piece of information right now. But first, do you want to live? Tai San exchanged glances with the stranger and nodded, wondering where all this was leading, especially when he keyed in another command and multiple images of a satellite dish from the Eagle Mountain Observatory enveloped the entire room. Then I suggest you tell me everything. Tell me all that you know about Eagle Mountain.